folks. Good afternoon. Can I have your attention, please? At this time, there will be a presentation. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's been a, a privilege to stand before you this evening. And um, you know, we're here to celebrate life, the life of our mom, the mom Rebecca Tommy. Uh, my name is Wale Adelagunja. Uh, I'm a commissioner for the state of Delaware, and I sit on the board for the Delaware African and Caribbean Affairs Commission. Uh, so we, we work with the governor of Delaware. Uh, among us, we have um, we've been a privilege to work with one of our leaders who represent the country of Cameroon very well in the state of Delaware. In the history of Delaware, Dr. Francis Thurman was the first black man to put together the School of Nursing in this city of Delaware. As a trailblazer, he produced almost 600 nurses for the city of Delaware. We are grateful for his leadership. Uh, from day one, all he wants to do is service. We are saying this to let you know that mommy produced the best for us. Yes. And through his leadership, we are able to put together Africans in the state of Delaware. And we work closely. He gave us all the tools that we need. And with his leadership, we are able to produce the first black commission in the country of America. Wow. Yes. At the state level. You may be hearing other African commission, but nothing at the state level. Through his leadership, we're able to put it together. Uh, so we, it, it means a lot to us. A mommy means so much to us. Through him, I was able to meet, meet with mommy. You know, very, very kind, very generous. What do you want? What do you want to eat? Always asking, you know. So he reminded me of, you know, the beauty of being, a, you know, having a good mom. Yeah. Um, so as a result, uh, you know, I bring to you from the state of Delaware, uh, one of one of our first black women in the state of Delaware. Uh, she's a state representative, Dorsey Sherry Walker. Before I give her a microphone, I want us to look. Let's look at her very well. You know, state representative Sherry Dorsey Walker. She's not just only state rep. She's also, she sits on the commission. She's a commissioner as well. Mm -hmm. And she represents agriculture, education, housing, and not only that, she's actually running for the Lieutenant Governor of Delaware. Good afternoon, family. Again, I am Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker. I represent the third district. And as I look out at all of you who, you are my family, I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us. As we sit here as a family, we don't mourn like others mourn as our word tells us. And look at what mommy has done. She's brought everybody together and we're celebrating life that we may have it and have it more abundantly. So we do have a tribute from the state of Delaware and I'll show it to you. Because mommy's worthy. I first met Dr. Francis Torman. He said to me, he pulled me to the side and he said, I need you to understand one thing. God is doing a mighty work in your life. And then learning about his family. 
And I turned around and said to him, God is doing a mighty work in your life too. You just heard that he's produced over 600 nurses in the state of Delaware. That comes from mommy. When you think about the legacy, the fact that there are two winning jerseys in here with mommy from her grandchildren. See her children rise up and call her blessed. That's what our word tells us. So I'm gonna read a little bit of the tribute, but most importantly, I'm mindful of the fact that we all stand on mommy's shoulders. And mommy has left an amazing legacy for us to walk in it, in the beauty of it, and know that he has done a mighty work through her. And now it's our job to carry the bloodstained banner and continue this mighty work that God put in her and will continue. The State of Delaware House of Representatives in memoriam, be it hereby known to all that the House of Representatives extends its sincere sympathy to the family of Mommy Rebecca K. Torman. The House of Representatives offers its respectful condolences and directs this memorial be issued the ninth day of March, 2024. Signed by the Speaker of the House, Val Longhurst, the Chief Clerk, Richard Puffer, sponsors, Representative Medina Wilson Anton, and Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker. May God bless you and continue to keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you perfect peace. เสียงเตือนยืนตาเปิดคำวิญญาณสีเตือนจึงเหมาะนี้บ่ก็เป็นน้องเมื่อยืนฝันนุ่นจึงมองจึงเหมาะนี้สีนุ่นจึงบิด
I'm a grand adult. Welcome the family back in the church. This is a special time and honor for the children to actually be the ones to usher her back in. Family, you can now take your seats, go the back the way.
you, thank you so much. Uh, we are about to start with a service. So please find a place somewhere, sit, and let's get started. Uh, we are honored this afternoon to be led by one of us, uh, Pastor Peter, John Peterson. He has actually been in Cameroon for a very long time. He knows everywhere that you all come from. So he will be speaking the language that you understand. So Reverend, we are glad to have you tonight uh, to be assisting us uh, for this service. So uh, you can take it from here, please. I will plead and plead that if you have to talk, you excuse yourself and go outside and talk. This is a time when we are supposed to be seated quietly and listen to the word of God. If you came here for some respect for Mama, please, we plead for some silence. Thank you so much. Sisters and brothers in Christ, uh, this is a, indeed a privilege for me to be able to be here and to lead the service for Mama Rebecca. Um, as uh, I was introduced, uh, it was noted that I did spend some time in Cameroon and a number of different places including Kumba. So I'm familiar with uh, where Mama came from. And uh, just listening to the choruses brings me back there so much. But tonight, we're going to focus in on the Lord and what the Lord has to say to us in the face of death and in the face of life. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We meet today to give thanks for God's gift of Mama Rebecca and the impact that she made on everyone's lives. We celebrate her life, we mourn her passing, and in the midst of our sadness, her faith and our faith tells us that death does not have the final say. God has the final say. We know this because of the love that God has shown us in the person of Jesus the Christ, who died for us, rose for us, reigns in power for us, and yes, indeed, even prays for us. It is because of our faith in him that we find comfort on days like today, and it gives us the strength to continue on in this fallen and broken world till tomorrow. So listen to the words that Jesus himself has to say about life and death. From the book of Revelation, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever, and I have the keys to death and Hades. And from the Gospels, from the Gospel of John, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And from the gospel according to Matthew, come to me, all of you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Let's open with a word of prayer. By the way, I might invite you to please silence all your cell phones. When I was in Cameroon, even though it was many years ago, there was a sign in the beginning at the entrance to each church in the PCC that I was at that said, please silence your cell phones. Unless God is calling, they're just an interruption. So let's open with a word of prayer. Father God, you are the author of the world's joy and the bearer of the world's sorrow. Be compassionate towards us in this time of loss. Swallow, uh, uh, sorrow can swallow up us like a long dark night and leave us longing for the light of morning. Pour out your Holy Spirit anew upon us to enlighten our hearts, touch us with, our, with your healing touch, that we will know your comfort in sorrow. Help us to see through the grave 
to the joy of life eternal that you have granted Mama Rebecca and each one of us that put our faith and in trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray this all in his name and let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Before we do the scripture readings, I'd like uh, us to join together and, uh, and singing uh, Through the Love of God. Then all rise and sing. were chosen to be read tonight and the first one we're going to read together we're going to read the 23rd psalm which is printed on page um, 6. page 6 thank you very much so please join me in reading it together the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That rod and that 
path they come from me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second scripture reading is from Paul's letter called the first letter to the Corinthians. We're going to read chapter 15, verses 50 to 58, and Bridget Torman will lead us in that. We'll, that'll, we'll just read it to us. What am I saying, brothers and sisters, is this? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment. In the inkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised and perishable, and we will be changed. For this is the perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immor immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this morti mor mortal body puts on immort immortability, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that the Lord your labor is not in vain. That is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we'll be reading, be read uh, verse 16 to the first verse of chapter 5, through the first verse of chapter 5. And Samuel Martin will read that for us. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Thank you very much. The word of the Lord. Let's join together in a chorus of Yield Not to Temptation. Yield not to temptation. seated. I invite you to bow your heads in a quick prayer with me. Heavenly Father, you have given us your word. Now, Lord, pour out your spirit on me 
so that I faithfully interpret it for these loving people. And Lord, if what I say is consistent with what you say, drive it deep into our hearts. If not, blow it away like the chaff on the wind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, friends, I never met um, Mama Rebecca, but only learned of her through her biography that uh, Dr. Francis Torman sent to me. But what jumped out of me of that biography was how blessed, how blessed she was by God, and how blessed you all were to have her. I understand that she was a woman with a deep faith and a deep commitment to a vibrant love for others, especially children. She was a member of the CWF, which I've seen in action in Cameroon and in the Cameroonian diaspora in the United States. She was blessed with many children, and God fulfilled her heart's desire for a daughter. She shared her faith and love with her own children, but let her love overflow. Let it overflow. Her cup runneth over for other children beyond her immediate family. She was blessed with God's grace to overcome several medical challenges to become known as the Miracle Lady. Who says miracles don't still happen? It's because of those things that I felt drawn to the text of scripture that we just heard read. The first, of course, the 23rd Psalm. Now the 23rd Psalm is a very familiar psalm. It was written by King David, who was once a shepherd. It brings much comfort to those facing death and to those that mourn a death, as we do today. It comforts us with the promise that if we make the Lord our shepherd, he'll be there to guide us safely home through the valley of the shadow of death to dwell in his house forever. It's often heard at funerals, so often that it becomes associated almost exclusively with death. But surprisingly, this is not a psalm about death, friends. This is a psalm about life. It's about how, when we make the Lord our shepherd, he's there to care for us on a daily basis, much like shepherds in the old days cared for their sheep daily. When, it was, when this was written, shepherds would lead their sheep out to pasture each and every morning. They'd lead them up craggy slopes by familiar routes to lush grazing areas where they knew they could feed them and where they could recline and find rest. They'd lead them to pools of still water where there was no fear of being swept away by the rapids. They'd guide them and protect them all the day long from perils and predators. If they strayed, they'd go after them and pull them to safety with the crook of their staffs. They'd tend to their wounds by anointing them with oil and as the shadows lengthened at night and twilight descended, each and every evening, they'd lead them safely home, down those same craggy paths, through the shadows, <coughs> where it could be hiding a predator waiting to snatch one of them away. And as they led them, they would pound their staff on the ground in rhythmic beat that the sheep would recognize, and so would the predators, and be scared off. It's a psalm that tells us that we don't have a God that we can only turn to in times of danger and death. We have a God we can turn to in all times and under all circumstances. It's comforting to know that in never changing and uncertain world, there's a God out there that we can count on in plenty and in want, in sickness and in health and from whom death can never part us. It's comforting to know that there's a God out there whose love never changes and whose care 
never wavers. It's not only comforting to know that, it's actually freeing as well. It frees us up to love and care for others as God loves and cares for us. I can't help but think that it was God's care for Mama Rebecca that enabled her to care so effectively for others and to love others so fervently. And the other texts of scripture speak to me of how when her body just wore out and couldn't stand one more miracle, Jesus came to her to lead her home. And at the resurrection, is going to clothe her with a new body that will never wear out. That comforts me. So that as I stand here today, I know she stands with Jesus the Christ. And though she's dead to me, she's very much alive to God. And I very much look forward to meeting her when the Lord comes to lead me home through the valley of the shadow of death to his house forever. And I'm not getting any younger, so it, who knows? It could be close on the horizon. <laughs> Friends, Thank God for Mama Rebecca. Mourn her passing. Put your faith and trust in Jesus and be confident of seeing her again. One thing that stands out for me from my time in Cameroon was what I experienced when I attended memorial services there. After the brief service was over, we would sing, sing a mournful chorus as we slowly made our way to the grave to pray. And then as we walked back, we sang a joyful Christian chorus that launched us into dancing. I wish we non-Cameroonians in the United States would adapt and adopt the similar practice over here. Because while we mourn, we don't mourn as other people do. We mourn as a people of faith, with joy. So, I'd like to ask you today, when you leave here and when you leave with the, celebrate, the celebration in Newcastle afterwards, that you leave with joy in your hearts and thankfulness. Jesus didn't forsake Mama Rebecca. He blessed her, and he blessed others through her. Rejoice in her life and Jesus' care for her during her earthly life and now in her eternal life. Let Jesus care for you and be blessed and be a blessing like her. And to God will go the glory. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear remembrances of the family. Uh, first is the chorus. CWM. Yes. So at this moment, before we hear from the family, uh, we thank you for that beautiful message, Reverend. I would like to invite the Christian Women Fellowship of GPC, get us back. If you are in the house, uh, we need some few choruses from you. So get up as those soldiers that you are and let's start singing. We'll sing about two or three of the songs before the family come up and say something. GPC. And if there is any other CWF member, just join us. GPC women, what are you doing? Running the race of faith. Race of faith, standing on the promises of God our King. Running the race of faith. Race of faith, standing on the promises of God. That was just an introduction. Go ahead. <laughs>
Christian Women Fellowship. Uh, Mama was a strong member of the CWF back home and whenever she visited us in Gettysburg, she was always a part of us. So we thank you all so much. Okay, at this moment we are going to invite the family. We're going to begin with Dr. Francis Torman, who is going to uh, speak for the Torman family. Thank you very much, Reverend Dr. Patterson. You're welcome here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone here. We all know this is not technically supposed to be a sad occasion. It's always difficult to lose a mother, but at 93, what more can you ask for? I think even God will be mad at me if I complain too much. Um, I believe with the reverend sitting next to me that God will say, so wait a minute, how much, much longer did you want to have to stay? And what would I tell him? What would I ask for? You know, this, we are often as humans and as weak as we are in our faith, we always have that question, why me? Why me was the first thing that came to my mind when I lost my mom. But then I also thought about it, I said, if God should turn around to me and said, okay, tell me, who should it be? Whose mom should I take? Whose daughter or child should I take? Do we have an answer? I don't think so. So that's why we consider this occasion to be a joyous one, a celebration of life. Um, Mama Rebecca, lying here, is really a woman of virtue. Like I heard the CWF sang those beautiful choruses. She was one of the founders in Kumba at the Presbyterian Church in Kumba when they were forming those CWF groups many years ago. So I could only but imagine how long ago that must have been. But we have to always think of what is going to happen the next day after. Because Mama Rebecca, in as much as she had a good life, her life never went without some challenges. She was actually born in Nigeria where her father was in the military. And like some of us will know, when you, you know, families may in the military, you may travel, what, cultural attaché, or whatever they call it. But then when they relocated, the family relocated back to Cameroon. She got married at a very young age. Uh, my mom was not more than 15 when she got married. Yes, she was very young. And she was blessed with 11 children, 10 boys and one girl. So, I, I asked one of our elder sisters in here, who knows Mama very well, in the name of Macha Mami Elindanga. And I said, Mami, why did Mami Rebecca have so many children? <laughs> and she told me a story that I will never forget. She said when Mama Rebecca, she lived with Mama Rebecca, she grew up with Mama Rebecca. 
she was only having male children, male children. <laughs> and Mama Rebecca kept asking for that one girl. And that was one of the reasons why she kept on having. I said, my, my dad must have been a happy man. <laughs> so, to make a long story short, when she finally had that one lucky girl that she was asking for, oh boy. Kumba, Kumba was shaking. Yes. Mami Rebecca finally had a, a girl. Mami Rebecca had a girl. Mami Rebecca. So there was commotion. You know how back home then we used to, they used to wear us diapers, right? Diapers, napkins. I'm sorry, I've been away for so long. So, and I'll ask my sister to excuse me say this, but I have to say it. After all, mom is here, she's bigger than you. So I'll say it. So that napkin, because they were doubting that Mami Rebecca had a, they had to just take it off. Because, because everybody wanted to, to see that Mama Rebecca actually had a female child. And as, as one of my, my, my other brothers would say that the whole Kumba don't see. <laughs> so, this is actually an interesting story because to also piggyback on that my big sister, Mami Macha, Amy, who is here. Since she grew up with my mom, and my mom got her married to her husband, and she started having male children. <laughs> and as she told me, as Mama Elin Naga told me, her husband got upset. Say, Mami Rebecca, don't contaminate my wife <laughs> with male children. She's sitting right here. I'm not making this up. So, you know, it's just to tell you how simple Mama Rebecca was. Um, she came from a big family herself, family of eight. Ten, Ten actually. Ten. Oh, see, a big family. I have all the cousins here, they, they set me straight. So I cannot lie here. Yeah, so there were 10 of them. I only knew eight because by the time I was born, there were only eight of them. So um, it's a big family. And she is the second to the last remaining now. They are just one man standing out of the eight of them. But what I can say, and you can bear me witness, that it's, it's important for us to bury our parents than for our parents to bury us. Um, you know, I think my, I would have been more devastated if she would have been crying that who would bury me. You know, but at least I'm burying her. So for that, I am blessed. Okay. So I would uh, really like to take this opportunity to thank all of you. Um, our dad passed away about 16 years today. Uh, she would be buried next to him. Um, I looked her, at her, she looked so beautiful. I said, my dad has to remarry her. When he <laughs> so I'm taking her right next to him, um, right next, next to him, right there. They have to remarry. Because when, when I come back, I want to be their child again. <laughs> so I want to thank all of you for, for coming. It's really been a pleasure. Uh, my mom lived in uh, America for so long, about 32 years, if I'm not mistaken. I remember the days when she and I used to go to the nightclub in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Um, you tell that woman can dance. You know, I, I, I got my dancing moves from her. Um, we used to have Lo Tam Tam, Makosa Room, uh, Calabash, you, you name it. We had like five different nightclubs. Club Makosa. We used to go there and party. My, my friends would think she was my girlfriend, but I said, you know, I wasn't married at the time. I was single, you know, I was young. She would cook, she loved boxing. We we'll watch Mike Tyson fights, we we'll watch all kinds of stuff. 
you know, my friends here, Albert, Mati, Saki, my cousins, we will, we will all sit down and she will cook and we will eat. So all she wanted is to feed people. So this occasion is about eating, drinking, and dancing. So we're going to party. Uh, on that note, I'm going to beg to stop here and I'll let the program move on. Thank you. We will next hear from Dr. Emmanuel Njomo, who will speak on behalf of the Fabu family. to wish all of you a hearty welcome and the Tomen family, the Fabu family, we are blessed to have your presence. To the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Mami Rebecca, Kechaya Tomen, as well as Mami Rebecca's extended family here in the United States and in Cameroon. The Fabu clan, the AT clan, including in-laws, friends, and well-wishers. We gather here in the state of Delaware the city of Middletown to honor the life and legacy of a remarkable mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, our beloved aunt, Mami Rebecca. In her four, score, four scores and 13 years, she lived a full and vibrant life and painted a portrait of beauty, love, unwavering faith that will forever inspire us and guide us. Her love knew no bounds. She made each person feel valued and cherished. Of my many encounters with our aunt, Mami Rebecca, I will mention only two which I find illustrative. <coughs> Dr. Francis suggested I don't speak too long, so I will honor that request. Yes. Every first Sunday in October in the Presbyterian Church here in the US, is designated World Communion Sunday. Now it was a tradition in my church that all foreign members would do the call to worship in their native languages, all foreign members. Of course, since my father was a trader, I didn't get to learn our native language. So the Saturday, preceding the Sunday, I will call Mami Rebecca on the phone from Virginia and, and give her the call to worship and she would translate it and then teach me how to pronounce it. <laughs> we will work on this for at least an hour so that I get the pronunciation correct. That was Mami Rebecca. Then, the four years that our last child, Cameron, attended the University of Delaware, gave me countless opportunities to visit with Mami Rebecca, and I can attest to the fact that Mami Rebecca prepared the best country plantain, <laughs> the 
the best ndole, the best koki, and the best okra soup in the state of Delaware. <laughs> And to top it off, to top it off, she would always give me a huge doggy bag of food to take home to my lovely wife, whom she called Susie. And as empty nesters with busy lives, this food came in handy. <laughs> as we mourn the loss of Mami Rebecca, let us also celebrate her incredible legacy and carry forward the lessons that she taught us about love, kindness, and faith. Today is a sad day, I get it. It's the day that we mourn the passing of Mami Rebecca. But today is also a happy day. It is a day that we take comfort that Mami Rebecca has been called home to her heavenly reward, where she will bask in the eternal light of God's love. And there will be no more pain, no more ICUs, no more hospice. May her soul rest in peace and may her memory be a continued blessing to us all. Thank you. We will next hear from the Bamana group. Hello, everybody. Uh, I will say a few words on behalf of the Bamina USA, USA family based in uh, the Washington metropolitan area. Uh, when I was chosen, I was privileged to say f these few words. I didn't know what to say. But after listening to the previous speakers, uh, I got inspired. Let me just say this. Mama Rebecca was a value member of the Bamina USA. So we will miss her dearly. Uh, also, when I listen to the previous speaker, they keep mentioning that Mama Rebecca only had 10 children, 11, 11. 11 children. So uh, I kind of felt bad. And I said, you know what, I'll correct this. As you guys can all see, if you add this beautiful woman and man standing in front of you, how can you say Mama Rebecca only had 11 children? <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, I really wanted to correct this and to say that uh, 
the family torment should not be, you know, tormented. They should be happy. <laughs> so the family is bigger than they say, that they previously thought. And so on behalf of the Bamela family, we only pray God that her soul rest in peace and that God may guide the whole family, including us, and uh, bless this family forever. Thank you very much. We're going to enter a, a time of prayer, prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of intercession. We're going to conclude the prayer with the Lord's Prayer, and which will we recite, which we will recite together. And at the conclusion of the prayer, there'll be another song, and then we'll have what's called a commendation, which I'll explain at the time. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of grace. We thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, to be God with us and God for us and to rescue us from ourselves and from the evil that's taken hold of the human race. He shared our life, took upon us, on upon himself, the death that we deserve and opened for us the kingdom of heaven. He is our good shepherd, and it's because of his presence with us that we can walk through life in the shadow of death and fear no evil. We thank you for favoring us for a time and a season with Mama Rebecca. We thank you for her love of family and friends, her caring, generous heart, her deep faith, and for your grace to lead her home. Lord, we pray that you forgive her all her sins committed in this life, cleanse her with the blood of Jesus for the eternal life you have in store for her, a life of love that has no end, and welcome her as one of your own sheep. one of your own sinners, of your own redeeming, home to be with you. I lift up to you, Lord, all those who are going to miss her in the days, weeks, and months ahead. It's not easy, as the speaker said, to lose a mother, no matter what age. I know that for a fact, having lost my mother when I was young. And having stood and presided at services, Lord, as you know, for many mothers. I pray that you would envelop them with your blessed assurance. You'd uphold them and sustain them. Grace them with the ability to mourn with joy and give them a glimpse of the living hope 
of seeing her again in you. God of all comfort, in the midst of pain, heal us with your love. In the darkness of sorrow, shine your light upon us and give us your peace. Awaken us in the spirit of mercy that as we feel the pain of others, we may share with them the comfort we find in you. Bring us at last with all your people into the kingdom of your glory, where death itself is ended and every tear is wiped from every eye. We ask this all in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Good Shepherd, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. We'll have one other song. So I'm going to invite one of Mama's daughters. So Sister Florence, you're not the only one, okay? And I don't, yes, I think uh, Dr. Francis really had to actually make that correction because I felt bad too. I thought I was one of them. And I know all of your wives are Mama's daughters. So that, you know, correction needs to be made. So I will invite Sister Grace to come up and give us your beautiful voice. Thank you.
Jesus alone can bless. Jesus is mine. Amen. I'm going to ask all of you to rise if you're able. And we're going to commend Mama Rebecca to God's care. Gracious God, by your power you gave us life. And in your life, love, you're giving us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Mama Rebecca to your safekeeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and to bring us all to the joyful resurrection and the glory of your eternal kingdom. Rest eternal, grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nation and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. We're going to have one last song, Blessed Assurance, which is printed in your programs. On page 7. Blessed Assurance Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine! Here of salvation, purchase of God, born of this spirit, washing his blood. standing for the benediction, but I'll take a moment of pastoral privilege before the, I pronounce the benediction to just say it's, I wish American congregations would sing as vigorously as you do, <laughs> because it warms my heart and it warms my heart to hear CWF's chorus and, and all you folks singing, and as I like to tell people, I visited a lot of places in Africa, but my African home is Cameroon. Yeah.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and rest with you this day and every day, now and forevermore. And let us all God's children say, Amen. I want to take this moment to particularly thank the Reverend for leading us this afternoon. Uh, we know you have Bamena blood in you, you have Bamena blood in you, you have Kumba blood in you, so you are part of us. So thank you so much for all your work. Okay, uh, for those of you who came in late, uh, you will have the chance to see Mama. We went to open the casket again for those of you who came in late, so that you can take a last look of Mama and pray with her. And then for those, and if you know you are hungry, they also have some snacks in the bag. You can grab some bags and just chew on while we prepare for the evening. You know the bigger program is in the evening at the hall. So we hope to see all of you very soon in the hall. Place is going to start on time. So because I think this population should just be moving straight to the hall to when we are done here. So we will be starting on time there. So I will invite you to come back and open mama. Thank you. Mama was an anate for long for his mama for my mama. Long